Live from the Cactus Creek at Ibri, he is the king of prime time, Ghana's undisputed entertainment laureate, and still the youngest old man in Ghana. Put your hands together, show some love for the indefatigable K. <laughs> I told you last week, say, come on, I So we are going to continue. I didn't even let my what am I go home? What that cactus creek one week, man. <laughs> but we are back. We are going to take a short commercial break. When we come back, we are going to the shocking conclusion of our interview. And Shoku, we'll be right back. <laughs> KSM show. And special birthday wishes, belated though, to great friends of mine. The first one is my own boss, Amma Pratt. Yes, boss. <laughs> the next one goes to a good friend, Lawson Doji, belated. Happy birthday, man. And the final one goes to my big man, Dr. Nyaho Nyaho Tamaklu. Show you some love, man. He just sent 71. Happy birthday to all three of you. Okay, people, on 14th May, I'm sure you know it, we are celebrating what I call our most vulnerable assets. We will be from Mother's Day, but I think it's the day of celebration for the most vulnerable assets. We'll be having a unique celebration at the Cactus Creek, man. Great food. For the first time, great laughter with live comedy. Yes, Jacinta will be at the hotel treating all of you. Girls, ma tell you something. All those men, when they talk, say we are fake. Look, these women, they are packaging too much. Packaging is our right. And we will package till we die. Any man, we don't like your packaging. This is your eyelashes. It's too long. Reduce it. Is it your lashes? Don't you know it's public service? If lights goes off and all the women start blinking, don't you know it to be fun? The great celebration starts exactly at 1 p.m. So join us for the celebration of our most vulnerable assets on May 14th at Cactus Creek. See you there. Cactus Creek. It is no longer Ghana's best kept secret. It's an open secret. So serene, so heavenly. And the meals? Mm, mm, mm. Just like home cooking, Cactus Creek, your soul will thank you. you are Call our WhatsApp 055 039 Folks, take a look at this beautiful house. This is a three bedroom, four bathroom house. Is only 25 minutes drive from Kotoka International Airport and five minutes drive after the Oyare Farm Mall. All the rooms are master bedrooms. They all have ceiling speakers, water heater, an open living room with kitchen. If you're interested in this building, call this number 024 726 0115. Call and ask to speak with Mr. Ampon if interested. Thank you. Louisa. Azipa Essentials has good news for you. If you're in Takradi and it environs, don't worry. You can pick up Azipa Essentials jacket at Rulo Unisex Boutique in Anaji, Takradi, Queen of Peace in Taco Full Road. Call or WhatsApp 0544-548766. Paul's Fitness Center, the premier destination. Meet the indefatigable captain. There are three things that I love doing. Number one, workout. 
number two workout number three workout workout put mind soul and body together the captain has spoken busy bright lights here they make me dizzy logo liggy i just want the lizzy it's a logo liggy uptown chasing for the lizzy Downtown, everybody busy, local liggy. Life be local liggy. I just want the Paul's Fitness Center, yeah. East Ligon Branch, Lizzie Sports Complex, I Cotton really Street, East Ligon, Accra, Ghana, 0302 519675. Kumasi Branches, Officers oh. Mess Branch, Denyame, Major Kobina Drive, Kumasi, 0541 871 602. Golden Tulip, Kumasi City Branch, Rain Tree Street. 0322-492-647. Pulse, the premier destination for fitness in Ghana. Say what lie we for on town. The KSM show. We're back. What am I? Yeah. Thank you for staying, man. We have, we have to keep you here. I have to stay for you, you know. Yeah, stay you're, for you're, me. you're a living legend. You know, I, See, I'm even sweating because I can't believe I'm sitting down with you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when he came, the first thing I warned him was said, Chale, you are my guest, though. Because he has interviewed everybody, the whole world. Yeah, but we'll, we'll talk about that. We're too quiet for the whole world to interview people. So when he came, I said, Pacho, this is my show. So what is Pacho? He's next. <laughs> <laughs> He's next. Expect him on my show very soon. <laughs> <laughs> but... We were, we were at a very exciting point mm. last week when we broke off, you know, mm. about yeah. some of the experiences you yeah. had while in China, yeah. in terms of people actually come and feel your skin to exactly. see whether to exactly. raise. Yeah. You want to visit somebody, they were wondering whether you had just given them AIDS and mm. things like that. How long did this continue? I think as long as from you there. the time that I started living in China till yeah. the time I left. Did you see that racism or just ignorance? You know, racism is they know you're black, so they discriminate against you because you're black. I think I'll go for both. you go for both, okay. Yeah, some people are ignorant, because mm. I'm telling you Chinese people are not exposed. Um, and some know it, and they intentionally mm. want to let you yeah. know that, hey, we don't like you. Mm. I mean, don't online, especially online, right? when you have, especially those of us who are dating Chinese women, it's terrible. You don't, you don't want to post your girlfriend on a Chinese mm, social media. Mm. I, I think um, people even come to my YouTube channel because I used to have videos with her on my YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. People come there, take the videos, put a, a Chinese um, voice note behind it saying that uh, this guy has HIV and he's spreading. I have a video online where I think I even spoke about it. Me, people accused me of having spreading HIV in China. Wow. And they all they did was to pick a video of mine on, the ch on my YouTube channel put a Chinese audio and then started circulating. It started going everywhere. And did yeah. that have any impact on the world people? I, I think out of China, no, because everything is in China. Yeah. yeah. They, yeah. The staff yeah. don't cross China. Yeah. yeah. Let me ask you this, since yeah. you opened the door. Yeah. How do you link up with a Chinese woman, man? <laughs> when you go to Rome, you do what Romans do. <laughs> I speak the language, so yeah. it was a bit uh, kind of easy for me. Personally, I love trying new things. Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Even my, my, my wife now is from Kenya, right? Yeah, no, yeah exactly. Yeah. So, you see, uh, truly, uh, truly, right? Truly, yeah, exactly. I'd, I'd like to host you and her one of these days. I'll bring her on board. Yeah, bring her on board. Yeah. I'll bring her on board. Yeah. I'll bring her on board. Bring her on board. Wow. Yeah. wow. So, I, I love to try new things. That's mm. basically why okay. I went to China. So, let's move from China because yeah. Chinese was her girlfriend. Thank you. Trudy is the wife. Yeah. How did you meet Trudy? I met her in Ethiopia, like I said, when I came to Africa to make videos. I started from Ghana. Ghanaians never saw what I was doing. So I sat down and I was like, which country mm -hmm. do I have to start this project? Because it's a project of connecting every African country. Mm. So I chose the AU headquarters, which is Ethiopia. And that's why I went to start my videos, and um, I met Trudy in Ethiopia. Okay, okay. Yeah. She's a blogger as well. She's a she's a she's a vlogger as well. V uh, that's called vlogger. Uh, vlogging. So vlogging means vlogging is the guys that write. And for us, it's cameras. So you are a vlogger because really? you are in front of a camera right now. Exactly. Yeah. I'm a vlogger, man. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know. I, I did. <laughs> so, I see. Yeah, I see. Yeah. So she's a vlogger. She's a vlogger. So mm. um, I went to 
Kenya, I went to Kenya some time ago. Um, China um, sent me on a trip to Kenya. Mm -hmm. and also through videos, I went there and then I wanted people to hang out with. So I was checking like creators in the country mm -hmm. that I can mm -hmm. um, create with. She was one of them. But I sent her a message, she never responded. So when I left to China, that's when she saw my message and responded. Mm. So when I was coming back to Africa, I was like, you know what, I'm going to Utopia. Do you want to link up? So she said, no. I'm like, okay. So I was there, he's like, oh, you arrived in Ethiopia? I was like, yes. He's like, can I come? I'm like, no. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, no, no longer interested because I'm in Ethiopia, you know. And I was there and all of a sudden, she tested me that, why are you not excited that I want to come and see you? Wow. So I was like, just come if you want to come because now you said no to me. Yeah. Why do you want me to say yes now? I mean, <laughs> Ghana guy playing stubborn. <laughs> 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 so I told her, just if you want to come, just come. So she bought the ticket, told me that, okay, um, this I'm is the arriving. ticket. Yeah. She's arriving at this time. I was like, okay, uh, this is where I live. I'm not even going to come and pick you. Uh, this is my hotel. If you want to come, you can come hey. and stay here. Yeah. Hey, so, hey, uh, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so I was just there, and then I was like, why would you do this, man? So I was like, okay, that could be a great content, going to meet a Kenyan at the airport and pick her up. She didn't know I was coming. So I went, on my way going, Ethiopia, land of flowers. I saw flowers. Ah, Ghana boy, romantic crap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I bought a flower, fresh one. She didn't know I was at the airport. I stood there for like one to two hours. Wow. I nearly gave up. With you your flowers? Just, yeah, with my flowers. My flowers cry. No, Uncle Yonsuka. So I ended up like waiting for two hours. And she didn't know I was coming. So she was just trying to fix everything before she stepped out. Yeah. She came, she saw me, got the flower, and then. She was kind of excited. I'm like, in China, we buy flowers every day. <laughs> you know, that's the trick. She's like, no one has ever given me a flower. I'm like, oh, okay, I think I won the lottery. Yeah. <laughs> so that's where it all started. She kept on like, mm -hmm. she even kept the flower, started watering it, took it to Kenya. And yeah, that's how we started talking. But we were just friends. Mm. And um, yeah, one thing led to another. And then she became my uh, girlfriend. And mm -hmm. I felt like she... It's one of the most hardworking women I've ever met. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I was like, okay, you have to. It's hard to meet people like her. So we decided to just put things together, and now she's my wife, you know. You really put things together? Yeah, I put things together, <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's yeah, fantastic. Yeah. How long have you been married? I married in September, yeah? So it's still fresh. Oh, it's very fresh. Yeah, but okay. yeah, we've known each other for four years. Great, great, yeah. great. So is she here in Ghana with you or you? She's travel? here in Ghana, but mm -hmm. when I, sometimes my trip, she come along with me mm -hmm. because she's also a vlogger. And mm -hmm. one good thing about traveling with my wife, I don't have to spend a dollar, you know, uh, because she makes her own money. So like, uh, <laughs> that, that's a good right, Ghana man, the wife also making money. So it, it's good. So sometimes I go with, uh, on my trips with her when I have a sponsor trips, mm -hmm. I come along, let's go. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, let's make it happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How, how does she? Love Ghana, how much does she? I think she loves Ghana more than Kenya now. Oh, really? Yep. I think um, she loves the hot, hot weather because mm, Kenya mm. is extremely cold. So, Kenya is cool. And um, yeah. she fell in love with our food. Mm. So she's always here, you know. What's all the, the favorite time. food? Have you Kotobre. produced kako, kako of yet? Course, uh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> of course. It's a basic requirement. See, you know, basic requirement. She can't cook without, like, that's why she loves kontomre. Yeah. So with the red oil, you got your kako and more money in there. And you're yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, every, everything salty, you know, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So yeah, she, she, she loves Ghana. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Wow. That is great. Let, let, tell us a little bit about your travels. You've been everywhere. Yeah. I think it's easier for me to tell you, where have you not been? Because when I say, where have you been? You've been there. No, but give, but me, give me there. I, I have been to 28 African countries. 28. Yeah. The goal is to travel every single African country and also connect the Caribbean to Africa. So um, this year I'll be going to the Caribbean um, to make videos in the Caribbean just mm. to connect Africans mm. and the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. So we'll be traveling all these countries just to create positive videos yeah. and also yeah. inspire other Africans yeah to be great in Africa. And you, you do it great because you travel to, you meet the, some farmer there who came from, tell yeah. me some of the stories that attract you and the individuals that you talk to. I didn't know that you can make it in Africa. That's one of the reasons why I left Africa. But when I came here, identified a problem, 
and then made it, I was like, you know what? I need to let people know that you can make it. But you cannot always tell people about your story. It's boring. So I decided to bring other entrepreneurs across the continent. And believe me or not, I've told a lot of incredible stories that also inspired my own journey to do mm. other things apart mm. from YouTube. Um, I've done Africans who are doing farming. Yes. I've done Africans who are into real estate. I've done Africans that are doing incredible stuff. Like, let me tell you one of the craziest things I've done that every time I travel, I get super excited. There's this young guy who uses school fees to uh, build one of the biggest charcoal factories in Ghana. School fees. And school fees, he was a law student. And when I did that story, I didn't know that people from different African countries got inspired and established the same factory in their own countries. I was recently in Ivory Coast, and there was this guy who said, I want to meet you so badly, you changed my life. I'm like, dude, how can I change your life, man? <laughs> Guess what? This guy established the same charcoal factory in Cote d'Ivoire, Cameroonian and Ivorian. And guess what? They called this guy from Ghana. And this guy went all the way to Ivory Coast, mm. fixed their machines for them without charging them a dollar. Mm. And the guy, yeah. Yeah. the guy told them that, I'm doing this for you because when Maya came to me, he did everything for me for free. When Maya came, I never even had one customer from abroad. But now I can't even mm. supply. Mm. So the money he gets, apparently he's been to different African countries just fixing the machines for them for them for free and comes back to God. A big shout out to Amin, wow. Amin from, wow. From, wow. From, from, from Zappo. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I've done stories that inspire other people. Like I got a chance to interview Casa Preco, which is one of my best stories ever. Because everywhere I go to, I mean, people didn't even know that Casa Preco, the, he's the man behind Casa Preco. Mm. Because if you check online, there's no interview about him. He never granted interview. He's like, Maya, this is what I'm doing for you. Uh, but Why did he do it for you? Because he, see, he invited me to his house. I spent four days in his house with him, just interviewing him. It was not even an interview, conversation, That's just yeah. walking around, yeah. taking the footages, putting them together. And when I uploaded them, everybody was like, yo, this guy is a living legend. Wow. And it's not just, it cut across the whole continent. Mm. It's not just Ghana. I've been in different countries where people are talking about Casa Preco. And I'm like, wow. You know, some of these videos, the way it travels, it, it sometimes shocks me. Mm. You know, and mm. in Ghana, I w let me give you a story of Rwanda. I went to a restaurant to eat, and the owner was like, I established this restaurant because of you. Really? From scratch. Give it up, man. If you, if you come to even Ghana, East Legon, there's a restaurant that is there that the guy established the whole restaurant because of me. But the guy who built the restaurant is a guy that I interviewed. He built with pallet woods. And because of the video I did, he reached out to this guy. They built a restaurant which caused a million cities. And I was just there eating without knowing that this is one of my products. Wow. And I have countless of stories. Wow. Not like to this. cut you off, but you guys remember Zozo? Yeah, yes. hey, exactly. I, gave you, that's I saw him on you. That's <laughs> him. Ah, that's him. That's when I saw Zozo, I said, hey, that's this Zozo. guy is doing this thing with furniture yeah. in Ghana. Yep. So, you know. That's Zozo. Yeah. After Zozo's story, Zozo, yeah. the guy, he built um, the stuff for the guy. It got wow. a lot of people. There are a lot of stories, countless. And I, I see all this impact that I'm making, even year of return. I was not working for the government. I was not the ambassador for the government, but I was more an advocate for oh, yes, people to return. Yes. Like if you come to Ghana, there are so many. If you go to Pampram, a lot of diasporans living in Pampram, yes. just because of me. And recently I paid them a visit and I, like I actually shed tears. Wow. To see all these grandmas uh, well, say, move to Ghana. Move from, to Ghana and like, yeah. oh, it, it took 79 years of my life. It took a young man. It took a young man's voice for me to follow that voice and came to Ghana. The, the, and when I see stuff like this, I always tell people, I don't take credit. I give credit to God. 
because I feel like it's God speaking through me. Because mm. for me, mm. when I set up a camera, I don't know what I'm going to say from the beginning mm. to the end. All I say, God, I'm here again. Take <laughs> let's control. Do it. Let's, <laughs> let's do it. So then when people watch the video, they'll be like, ah. I, I'm moving to Africa because of you. I'm doing this because of you. And I'm like, oh, okay, interesting. Then I don't let that get to me. All I do, thank God, who is next? Wow. I see, you see, I came here today. I saw what you've done. I'm like, you are next. <laughs> 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 the, the, the focus is to let Africans know that it's possible mm. to uh, build Africa by an African. You, you know, mm -hmm. I, I was at Safari Where Valley. Why is that, that description? Because, like I said, you know, the little I've noticed, I said, See, you want to change the narrative. I'm going to tell you something. Somebody actually, I, I slept in a, ho a hotel in Liberia. Then I uploaded a video. During COVID, I was stuck in Ghana. And somebody left a comment under my video. This guy travels in Africa saying that he's showing Africa to the world. But whatever he's showing in Africa to the world is not owned by Africans. Mm, that was a criticism. But for me, every negative comment, I use it to my advantage. I see something positive out of it. So yeah, that comment really hurts me, but there was a bit of truth in it. So what I did, COVID, when everybody was stuck in their rooms, I went to Kumasi, Lake Bosunche, just to refresh. I went there, I was sleeping there, and then the owner came, he's like, Mama Pats, he said, I own this place. I'm like, oh, nice, you own it. Okay, cool. Then the comment came back came again. Back. Like, yeah. you mean you own this place? He's like, yeah, I own it. How long did it take you? Four years just to acquire the land. Can you share your story with me? So why not? Wow. I interviewed this woman with no experience of, because I was not interviewing people. Mm. I was just traveling mm. and having fun. Mm. No experience did that video, put them together. I was even scared that my people are not going to like it. I woke up the next morning. The video was everywhere. Wow. Then I asked this woman, I'm still in Kumasi, do you know anyone who is an African living in Africa who has done something? It's like, oh, there's another guy. This guy, I interviewed this guy, the video went viral. Then the man also introduced another person to me right mm. in Kumasi. Mm. There's a, a, a restaurant that got bent in Kumasi, uh, Ice Cafe. Okay. They didn't know who I was. So I asked them, can I interview? They said no. By the end of the day, this is my son. You can just walk around the place with my son. Okay, I accept that. I did that when I released the video. People were calling her from America. That, did you meet that guy? That guy is serious. Now the woman called me to her house. She's like, "Now we are we are nipa we now buy one car." I catch him. I catch him. So and now she's now my mom, like more like adoptive mom. Yeah. Right? And that's when she actually told me her real story of how her restaurant got banned. Oh. And from there, I moved to Accra. I realized that hey, all the entrepreneurs are here. I did ANC Mall. And I've been doing back to back without knowing anybody, but I built my network from Kumasi. Tracy Kumasi was the Kumasi was the first place. And then like I know you. Who do you know? Who do you know? Who do you know? And this is where I am today. I don't know anyone. I don't know anyone. Trust the love, man. <laughs> we have come to a commercial break yeah. and normally when I have somebody for the second time, this is where I end it, but we didn't try full skill, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, folks, we're taking a commercial break, but when we come back, we shall have more fun. Stick around, we'll be back. The KSM Show. Okay, people, on 14th May, I'm sure you know it, we are celebrating what I call our most vulnerable assets. We will be from Mother's Day, but I think it's the day of celebration for the most vulnerable assets. We'll be having a unique celebration at the Cactus Creek, man. Great food. For the first time, great laughter with live comedy. Yes, Jacinta will be at the hotel treating all of you. Girls, Matalona something. All those men where they talk say we are fake. 
You know, these women, they are packaging too much. Packaging is our right. And we will package till we die. Any man will not like your packaging. This your eyelashes is too long. Reduce it. Is it your lashes? Don't you know it's public service? If lights goes off and all the women start blinking, don't you know it to be fun? The great celebration starts exactly at 1 p.m. So join us for the celebration of our most vulnerable assets on May 14th at Cactus Creek. See you there. Cactus Creek. It is no longer Ghana's best kept secret. It's an open secret. So serene, so heavenly. And the meals? Mm, mm, mm. Just like home cooking, Cactus Creek, your soul will thank you. you are Call our WhatsApp 055 039 Folks, take a look at this beautiful house. This is a three bedroom, four bathroom house. Is only 25 minutes drive from Kotoka International Airport and five minutes drive after the Oyare Farm Mall. All the rooms are master bedrooms. They all have ceiling speakers, water heater, an open living room with kitchen. If you're interested in this building, call this number 024-726. 0115. Call and ask to speak with Mr. Ampon if interested. Thank you. Louisa. Azipa Essentials has good news for you. If you're in Takradi and its environs, don't worry. You can pick up Azipa Essentials jacket at Ruler Unisex Boutique in Anaji, Takradi, Queen of Peace in Taco Full Road. Call or WhatsApp Vinkler. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that name. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we're back. We are back. Yeah, yeah, back. Sorry, yeah, you are yeah, back. We are yeah. all back. Yeah. <laughs> this this whole thing about in the COVID times and everything was quite. You went to Kumasi, mm. and that is where you you started getting into. Exactly. Yeah. COVID. I'm so sorry to say this. I know people died, but yeah. COVID changed my life. Wow. Um, with what I have today, with what I do right now, with the people that I know. It's all started from COVID. COVID area, yeah. Because I didn't know anyone. I didn't even know, like, I used to save money in a bank. A lot. And then I met these entrepreneurs that I started interviewing. As soon as they meet me, they were like, I want to mentor you. And I listen. I humble myself. Even if I have to clean your shoes, I'll do it. Yeah, I'm, I don't care. I'm the guy on YouTube videos. No. I just want to learn. So at the end of the day, they taught me that you don't have to keep money in the bank. And I ended up taking all my money from the bank and started investing, mm. buying land, mm. buying mm. properties, mm. building mm. my own estates. Mm. And that alone, it's something that I cannot get that from school. But this is what I normally say that the youth of Africa today needs to learn from the OGs. You know, maybe the generation that we are today, we don't respect the OGs. We, we hear their stories and we think that, oh, they're making it up. And at the end of the day, oh, what do you mean? But don't forget that one city in 1980s was big money that, those times. But today, when you hear somebody saying, I started my business with one city, probably you might think that, because I didn't know anyone. Do you understand? So that is, 
did I miss your question? I hope I answered your question right. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah Good. So yeah, yeah. I just hope that we can change our mindset, embrace the OG. Okay, you are now here. Yeah. And um, you're working with YouTube. Exactly. And it's become extremely profitable. Yeah. And I think in one interview that I was listening to, I think you mentioned that the Ghanaian youth do not seem to understand where the money is. Exactly. What have you learned that you can teach or share with the Ghanaian youth now? I think we should stop focusing on the fast food content and focus on evergreen. Mm. Evergreen? I like that. I like that soundbite. Yeah. Stop focusing on the fast food, food content. content. And focus on the evergreen. Evergreen content. Okay. The fast food content, Shatawali has done this. You post it tomorrow, it's no longer relevant. You have to post content that even 10 years later, somebody will watch it and know it will be like a fresh content to the person. Mm. I'll give you an example of Facebook started paying me within this year. All this while Facebook was not paying me, so I was not a big fan of posting on Facebook. I don't put my energy where you don't pay me. Mm. So <laughs> at, <laughs> at the end of the day, I, when Facebook started paying me, you know what I did? I went back to COVID time, the videos that I was uploading, and I brought all of them back to Facebook. And people are watching and thinking that it's, it's a video that I just did. <laughs> but I did those videos like yeah, years ago. From the archives. Do you understand? So these are what I, I keep on telling the youth. See, the internet is a gold mine. Use it wisely. Use it to your own advantage. Because you're in the internet age. You see, believe me, what you've been doing those times till now, I was a baby. If you had the internet those times, I don't think I'll be sitting down with you and speaking to you. So we need to change our mindset. Stop being naked online. Just thinking that when you're naked online, that's what. But don't forget that you won't be the same person you are in 10 yeah. years' time. Yeah. The internet never forget. Yeah, it doesn't. Anytime you talk in Ghana, people take it a negative way. Mm. Anytime you try to teach people something that you know, almost say, we are too known. Now, oh, bada bang. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. bada bang. So I decided to keep quiet. When you want to learn, you come to me, I'll, I'll teach. teach you. Yeah. But I'm not going to come because. And impose it on you. No, 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 yeah. no, no, no. There's no. so many things that I, I've learned, even with our musicians in the country, things that they can do right. I recently mentioned it in one of the interviews that next thing I saw, a whole music producer picking up a camera, lamenting, like, oh, we are kwala, we are over the bang, the bang. You see, but at the end of the day, I sit in my room, and I know the right thing. Because one, I'm not just a creator. I have YouTube. I'm the first guy to hit a million in this country. Yeah. I'm not a musician. Yeah. So for me to be the first guy to hit a million, million in a country where no one has ever hit a million, I need to brag about that. Right? <laughs> 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 you, you need to know yeah. that I, I'm yeah. doing something right. Yeah. But at the end of the day, they saw it that I was bragging, that, oh, oh bada bang. Okay, so I sat down. And I, I think the manager or somebody spoke to him, and then he ended up deleting it. But the hammer has already been caused. Mm. You know, mm. we need to learn mm. from each mm. other. Mm. I'm here, I will learn from you before I go back home. But if there's anything you think, oh, Maya, this thing that you've done, what can I do? I'll give you all the numbers, the metrics, and then I go back home. This is how it's supposed to be. We need to stop. Do you find that uh, Ghana is not open to ingenuity? Like yeah, I think <laughs> it starts from our politics. The politics, yeah. It, the, we are living in a country that is full of partisan politics. Mm. Like a, a friend said, is, I'm not worried about the politics, so I'm just worried about the partisan nature yeah, 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 of yeah. politics. Yeah, that's what, uh, politics, yeah, you know, yeah, politics, so. It starts from there, and it transcends down. Yeah. Because you can't even speak truth to power. No. Without people just Tagging attributing you, yes. you to a particular political party. Yeah. People came to my DM recently, insulted me. Why? Because I interviewed Mahama in Germany. Oh, you are campaigning for Mahama. I, I just, see, I didn't even know I'm going to meet Mahama. The whole event, I was, in, <laughs> I was supposed to interview. You were the really expecting to interview him, Mahama, and you got the chance. Mahama was not on my list. So I was invited. I was one of the 
four creators that was invited to be the host of this year Munich Security Conference in yeah. Germany. Yeah. World leaders, businessmen. My president was supposed to be there. My, he was there, not supposed to. He was there. Now I got there. I was paid to come and interview my president. I got there. He canceled it. When he canceled it, they were like, okay, you know what? The former president of Ghana is also here. So these guys, are, they organized the whole the conference whole, that, yeah, yeah. that the president went to. I interviewed ministers from Germany, the Greek minister, the special advisor to the president, the prime minister of Germany. I interviewed all of them. Now, former president Mahama was there. I came back to Ghana. Everyone was like, ah, Mahama has paid this guy. Now, everything that I post, they start saying that, oh, NDC guy. I'm like, he was yeah. not even part of yeah. the picture. So we need to yeah. get rid of the yeah. partisan politics and just know that this is right. This, this is, is wrong. wrong. That's it. I, if we don't start now, the country will be where it is. We, we not, we're not going anywhere. We're not going anywhere. I, I sit, I don't like politics in Ghana. I sit down and I'm like, can we all come together and start speaking truth to mm, power? The mm, things that we don't like, the mm. things that we think it needs to be changed, the things that we think that we, if you do it this way, it will be better. Ghana, Ghana deserves better. Like when you travel, because of the legacy Nkrumah built. Like, everywhere you go in Africa, people respect you because yeah. you're coming from Ghana. Yeah. But you, from Ghana, you look back and you be like, hey, <laughs> Nkrumah <Ikrona> Nkrumah <Jai, laughs> <didn't he? laughs> Easy, but it's, sad, it's yeah. all been destroyed because of the partisan politics that we, I, I even think if a government comes to power, the president, you don't even have to appoint people from your political party yeah. To, yeah. to be, because they don't even qualify. We live in a country where people don't qualify to be who they are, but they are there. Yeah, there yeah. Uh, you can have an IT uh, minister who has no idea about IT. Minister of Tourism has no idea about tourism. You see, but when you talk about it, people are like, we are color. No. No, we, we, we have to start doing things mm. the right way. Mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. so passionate about Africa. I'm so passionate about bringing people out of poverty. And your passion is evident in what you do. You know, the whole thing that has created Watermaya is the kind of content you have on YouTube. Exactly. Number one, it is relevant. Number two, it is uplifting and inspirational. So, you know what I'm saying? You don't have to say much, <laughs> Watermaya. Your work speaks for itself. Yes, you know, Thank and you. I, can, I can understand why coming from where you're coming from, yeah. certain things will frustrate you the way they do, you know. <laughs> and it was very interesting when last week you we were mentioning that uh, because of your success, people actually thought it was occultic. And that's the mindset. Hmm. And it's very, very sad, you know, the mindset that nothing good can Thumbs come up. from an individual. Thank you. And, and everything bad also comes from one particular place. And that's why so many entrepreneurs in the country don't even want to share their stories. They don't even want to inspire the youth. No. Because as soon as he comes out to speak, yeah. the same youth will attack him. Yeah. You know, yeah. I always tell my people, let's just be open-minded. Yeah, even if you think what this person is saying is not true, just look at it. What can I pick from it? From it. You don't have to accept everything, but pick something. See, I, I, I said something recently that I don't want to, because people were complaining, why is this guy always wearing slippers? Uh, <laughs> you, you have the money, you know, you know wearing yeah. all the... It's, yeah. like, it's not about looking rich. It's about creating wealth. And I never got to know this from Silver Platter. With entrepreneurs that I met, like someone like Casa Preco. He, he, he has built an empire, but no one knows him. This is, this is the kind of thing that we're talking about, not the guy. I don't want to be that guy. I don't want you to know me because I'm Walter Meyer or something. Yeah, I want you to know me for what I've done. Yeah. Not the person. But can you look back and say, he's the guy who did this, he's the guy who did that. That's it. Well, if that's what you're looking for, then trust me, you have it. <laughs> you do, you know, because all, all the time, I just have my mind focused on this guy who is working so hard to change the narrative, Yeah. you know, to upgrade that negative narrative, that, which unfortunately is fostered by some of us, you know. We, we, we seem to believe in that world that has been created for us, and so they don't even have to work hard. We do it for them easily you know, and pro keep projecting ourselves in the lowest possible denominator. And that's what you are fighting against. And that's yeah. 
what drew my attention to this? Mr. Anas, what were they? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you know, Try and so uh, to cut the long story short, it's a pleasure to have you here. I was wanted you here, you know, because I you are the kind of person that I wanted you to listen to. Uh -huh. Yeah, <laughs> I try. I try sometimes when I get an opportunity, I try to speak to them, but they also see you in a different way because me, my message is simple. You can go abroad. I'm not telling you not to go abroad. Yeah. You can go, but please come back. Because whatever little thing that you do here, you'll be recognized. You can do stuff, big things in the diaspora, and no one cares about you. Yeah. But when you come here, the impact you make, the employing people, bringing people out of poverty. So I always tell them, see, the money I've made in Africa, in Ghana, couldn't have made that money if I was still in China. Mm. And they would tell me, okay, if that's the case, let me also go and check. And come back. But I, I, you see, I, I, I'm not that selfish guy. I was even content creation. I always tell people, content creation is everything. If you have a passion for it, yeah. just go for it. Yeah. You know, and make your money. Like you're making dollars in Africa, you pay your taxes abroad, you're good to go. Yeah. This is what I'm I am. <laughs> no, I, I particularly like like uh, like what I'm hearing, yeah. you know. And I haven't said this before ever, you know. But I came from the U.S. when I when I tacked down from the U.S. Mm, I had one hundred dollars on me. Wow. As to how that happened there, it's a different story. But I arrived with one hundred. So I was telling my, my director that. I'm writing a book on myself. It's called Crash Landing. Because my arrival was as crash landing. You know, I had to come home and I came home. I won the dollars. You know. Hmm. And my only asset was belt and the woman. I'm telling you. As to how that happened there, it's going to be in the book. But <laughs> you, know, I, you, know, you know what's going through my mind? How I left the US to Ghana with just a hundred dollars and now I guess I own a resort in Ghana. That's the title <laughs> of my video. That's, that's, that's the title of my video. <laughs> that's the title of my <laughs> video. So <laughs> please, please get ready for me. I mean, this can come even before the book. I think, yeah. Kesem, yeah. I think you, you got an incredible story. And allow me, please, allow me to use your story to inspire other Africans, because that's my job. I mean, listen, there's so many people who know <laughs> KSM, but they know KSM for interviewing people. Yeah. But they don't know KSM, how KSM built KSM, how KSM built, I don't know, this is not even called KSM. This name, I need to, I need to ask you again, <laughs> it's so hard to pronounce. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> how you build this whole resort, I, I believe that it's a story that people want to know. I, you have to say yes on camera. <laughs> <laughs> Is it, is, it a, is it a yes? You want me to commit on my... Or I should also be chasing him the way I chase him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take the first time I wrote to you and how long it took. No, I, I, now, was, not, I was not sure if it was you. Uh, really? No, because um, <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Okay. KSM is... See, so today, I, I don't even believe that I'm the guy with a million subscribers. Yes. So when I yes. meet people in town, hey, my, I, I still get like... Oh, oh, so you all watch me. So when I saw your message, I called my mom. Like, okay, I checked the profile. He's the one. But uh, is he really the one? Because, you know, I, my yeah. Instagram, I, yeah. I give it to my PAs and mm -hmm. for them to. Mm -hmm. So you know how I got to know you're the one handling your, that was yesterday. When you started testing me that, oh, um, you guys are, and I'm like, I'm the one who gave the order for them, to, for me to come to yes. the show. So then I was like, oh, so that's case. I mean, okay, I have to be here today. So today I woke up, I have some videos to shoot. I'm like, you know what, pause, let me meet the legend and I'll be back, you know? So <laughs> <laughs> I, I just, I didn't know you were the one. Like, my, if my brothers see this, they won't believe it. Wow. But that was just watching you every single day. And here I am, sitting in a chair where legends come and sit here. Yeah. It's something that I was, I think I've made it in life. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've made it in life. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I, no, I, 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 I want to let you know that you've impacted in so many lives. 
and at the age of 66, he's still doing it. And let me just add a bit of value. Let me know what do you think I can bring on board. Wow. For free. I'm not, I'm just doing this for you. That what I can bring on board uh, yeah, to get the show to the next level, to still bring the money in yes. to run the show. Oh, oh man. man. I'm going to do that. I'm, I'm going to do that for you. Well, my yeah. director and producer is right here. And it's amazing the conversation you're having today. Yeah. Where I was, uh, Chale, what, how do we, what, how do we revamp the show? You have me. You, you know? have me now. And you so, have me now. Yeah, I'm going to do that for yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. You see, I said the show, but what you for? I, I want him, certainly. <laughs> Imagine, if I, so I, I better come in quickly. <laughs> I better come in quickly. No, what it means, it's so great to have you here, Thank man. You. Thank you. And you have done tremendous from Afri for Thank Africa. You. Thank you. Seriously, Thank you. you know, single-handedly changing perceptions. Mm. I, I, I felt like I couldn't do this all by myself. Mm, mm. So what I did was I was planting seed in every country that okay, I was in. Okay. So you have so many creators in Africa Who are? talking about Africa. Uh, if you don't know them, you can check Nigeria, mm. Taino Aina, mm. um, Stephen Ndoku from Nigeria. Mm. If you go to Kenya, we have a lot, so many countries. They're yeah. all my product, but I just stay behind the scene yes, and then and show what, them what yes. to do. Let's all project Africa in a positive light because the, the damage is huge. So we need more people, yeah. more voices. So yeah. if you're out there and you feel like picking up a camera, showing the positive image. I mean, sometimes Africans don't like it when Africans are showing positive image. Yes. But it's so important. Yes. You just talk about the damage they have done. The damage is and I think important. the hugest part of the damage is that we have been damaged to the extent that we think the way we, they want us to think. Do you know why? You know? Because colonization never yeah. left Africa. Yeah, never left. Yeah, they left. And they left physically, yeah, but mentally, yeah. they're still here. We're still colonizing our minds. So if you get an African that decide to get out of the shackles in their mind, the way they speak, you know that this guy is not colonized. Yeah. And this is what we need to change. Yeah. We need to decolonize the mindset of Africa. He's a man, man. <laughs> I swear to God. I swear to God. He is a man. <laughs> Decolonize. That's the whole key. Decolonize. No, decolonize. That's it. I mean, an African don't even believe that it's possible to make it in Africa. An African doesn't even yes. trust his own African. Yes. That you are the one who did it. I mean, a big shout out to Mr. Safari. Mr. Yeah. Safari. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah. what I'm saying. I'm sitting on a <laughs> Mr. Safari. Um, Aqua Safari. Aqua Safari, guy, Safari yeah. Valley. Like, if, yeah. you, if you listen to him speak, yeah. these are the people that, yeah. they, they let you know that mm -hmm. it's possible mm -hmm. to make it on the motherland. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. He I was mean, my guest one time, and he did say, at that time he was building Aqua Safari, he said, hmm. I'm building the best resort ever you can find in Africa. You know. I was with and him yesterday. You were with him yesterday? Yeah. Okay. We, we sat down, one hour conversation, but it was not an interview, I'm just waiting for him to get ready. Mm -hmm. But um, sometimes when I have time, I listen to people like that mm -hmm. just to you know what know what to do. My son, you have done more than well. Ah, thank you. This is my uh, production assistant here. Say, over, over, over well, they worry me. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you've done yeah, great, you, you know. You. And I know you're planted seeds everywhere, but you have okay. single-handedly cultivated this vim to change the narrative for Africa, mm -hmm. which is overdue. But thanks to people like you, it will be done. Folks, one more time. <laughs> that old Vinkra <laughs> was my guest. What am I in the house, man? And until we meet again next week, let me send off as I always do. But this time I want I want you to send off me, man. Ah. In the meantime, in between time. Should I tell them to subscribe? That's the only sign out. <laughs> <laughs> No, tell them uh, yeah. <laughs> no, uh, it, it's absolutely amazing to sit down with the legend. Uh, believe me or not, stick and stay. Next week, he'll be back by his energy level. <laughs> Should I say it's another level? <laughs> <laughs> like and subscribe. I'll, we will see you all next week. Thank yes. you. So we are out of, let the whole world say,